Right now on 12 News at 5, all eyes on Arizona as speculation swirls about the choice to fill Senator John McCain's seat. Amber Alert, a desperate search for two boys and the accused killer who may have taken them. Plus, holiday tragedy. Families holding out hope after a deadly boating crash on the Colorado River. And one week after the primary election, who's in charge of cleaning up all those campaign signs? Tonight, we're verifying. 12 News at 5 starts right now. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. We begin with our big story. Governor Doug Ducey is soon expected to name his choice to fill Senator John McCain's seat. It's a decision that will have a big impact, not only in Arizona, but the entire nation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kariba Devine. And I'm Mike Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm in for Mark Curtis tonight. Hanging in the balance are major issues like a Supreme Court nominee, health care, and the nation's budget. Team 12's Michael Doudna is live in the Alert Center tonight. And Michael, who are some of the odds on favorites to become Arizona's next senator? Caribe, it's a choice gaining so much attention with Republicans holding just a one vote margin in the Senate and whoever it is may end up shaping the course of the Senate for the next few years. Last week was a time for mourning. We're going to focus on, on honoring and respecting and comforting the family. This week, though, the focus is now on who will take McCain's pivotal vote. No. Who gets picked is even attracting money, with websites taking bets on who could be the potential replacement. The front runner, according to Predicted, well, is General Michael McGuire. We have to deal with whatever conditions uh, we face. He's the adjunct general for Arizona's National Guard, and he brings military bona fides along with a political blank slate. The second betting favorite would be the experienced choice, John Kyle, who served for 18 years as a senator, and there's also money coming in for Sydney McCain, though she would be a pretty interesting choice considering she's not a strong conservative vote in a Senate with very slim margins. Senator McCain had that way of making people feel like they were the only person in the world. Those kind words were spoken by Eileen Klein, the state treasurer who could also be a potential Senate pick. And then there's John Shadick, a former congressman who seems to check all the boxes of being a Trump supporter with experience. In fact, we caught up with him just last week to ask about potentially taking over. It's a question that you're welcome to ask, but it's a question I'm not answering. In reality, there are plenty of names out there who could take over for John McCain, but it will be up to Governor Ducey to decide who will help shape the future of the Senate. Whoever is picked will have some big votes to look at almost immediately. And at 6, we're going to take a look at what a replacement may face quickly after taking over. Live in the Alert Center, Michael Doudna, 12 News. All right, Michael, thanks so much. Tonight, we want to know who you think should fill John McCain's Senate seat, a family member, a politician, or a business person. And you can see our live interactive poll there at the bottom of your screen. And right now, 77% are saying a family member. So let us know what you think. Cast your vote right now by heading to 12news.com slash your voice. Well, developing tonight, divers scouring the Colorado River for any signs of life after a disastrous head-on collision. Yeah, this is just so horrific. Two boats carrying a combined 16 people crashing, then sinking Saturday night north of Lake Havasu. Divers recovering the body of a missing woman this morning. Three other people are still unaccounted for and presumed dead. Don't want to give the interpretation that there isn't a remote possibility that they uh, made it to the shore. But yeah, we are actively treating this as a potential drowning. Police say the water was really crowded because of the holiday weekend. Investigators also say no passengers on board either of those boats were wearing life jackets. Also developing tonight, a triple murder tied to an active Amber Alert. Two young Valley boys are still missing. Phoenix police have issued a warrant for the arrest. Accused, the suspect accused of killing the boy's pregnant mother and her roommate. A woman who says she knew the victim says 24-year-old Oralia Nunez was trying to escape what she says was a violent relationship with the suspect, Dimas Coronado. He's the biological father of the two boys taken. For problems, he would um, hit her and uh, kept her indoors. We thought that the, it would get better. It's a woman that fight for her life, that fought until the last minute for her kids. 
New at five, it's been one week since the primary elections and there's still plenty of intersections across the valley littered with all those campaign signs. As we know, the winners are moving on, but what about the signs for the candidates who lost? Yeah, Team 12's William Pitts is verifying how long campaigns have to clean them up. Even though we're a week out of election day, don't expect these signs to be going anywhere anytime soon. That's because state law only requires you to take the signs down seven days after the general election, not the primary. So even if you lose the primary, state law doesn't make you take them down until November. But that's not the end of it. Turns out election sign law is incredibly complicated. See, every city has their own regulations about campaign signs, like this insane intersection in North Phoenix. Now, I could be wrong, but there may have been some sort of election here. Campaign signs everywhere, mostly in the median between lanes of traffic. There are 24 signs on this stretch of road, and 14 of them are from the same candidate. That's totally allowed in Phoenix, but in Scottsdale, there are entire areas that are no sign zones, and each city has its own rules about where on public property you can put signs. There's even geometry involved. Now, we can't go through every city, but here's a few of them. Peoria, they have to come down no later than 15 days after the general election. Mesa, 15 days after both the primary and the general. But Phoenix is 10 days after the election they refer to. And Scottsdale is even weirder. Signs can only be up for 120 days. So if they're up too early, they may not stay up through election day. And state law says they have to come down within seven days. Confused yet? Now you know why campaign managers exist. So we can verify, in general, you'll be seeing campaign signs until about a week after the general election. William Pitts, 12 News. Well, thank you. Well, the economy is booming, the stock market soaring, and unemployment is at historic lows. But despite all of this, the head of one of the nation's largest labor organizations says things are getting worse for American workers. As Team 12's Nikki Carbajal reports, President Trump is fighting back. On a day celebrating labor, some mixed messages from the president for America's workers. Just days after announcing a freeze on federal employee wages, President Trump tweeting the American worker is doing better than ever before and attacking the head of the AFL-CIO, who disagrees. Uh, unfortunately, to date, the things that he's done to hurt workers out pace what he's done to help workers. On Sunday, Richard Trumka told Fox News that despite unemployment rates, workers are suffering. Wages have been down since the first of the year. Gas prices have been up since the first of the year. So overall, workers aren't doing as well. At Labor Day events around the country, some workers also voice concern over the president's policies. So if manufacturers aren't ready to be able to go out and produce products, we're, our members are not going to work. President Trump, who calls this the strongest economy in history, signaled Friday he was rethinking his decision on a raise for federal workers. People don't want to give them any increase. They haven't had one in a long time. I said, I'm going to study that over the weekend. It's a good time to study at Labor Day. Let's see how they do next week. But a lot of people were against it. I'm going to take a good hard look over the weekend. Congress can still add those wage increases into the budget on its own. Federal workers will also have to worry about a government shutdown if Congress doesn't pass a budget by the end of the month. Nikki Carvajal, NBC News, Washington. Ahead on 12 News at 5, a deadly hit and run driver on the loose. Valley police need your help tracking them down. Plus, here's a look at tonight's Who Tweeted It. For 153 years, the Arizona National Guard has been fighting for our state and our nation. Happy birthday, Arizona National Guard. We are forever grateful for all those who served and continue to serve. Find out who tweeted it coming up. And monsoon storms still firing up just to the north of us, right around the high country. Will they affect us here in the valley for tonight? I'll have your forecast coming up. And you're watching 12 News, your official home of the Arizona Cardinals. Right now, let's get a look at your hot headlines. A body found alongside a valley road. Investigators now trying to figure out what led to this death. Sheriff's deputies responding to State Route 85 and Hazen Road in the West Valley after this startling discovery today. Authorities not releasing any other information about the person found dead, saying the investigation is still in the early stages. A deadly hit and run driver on the loose tonight. Phoenix police now asking for help tracking them down. Investigators say a Ford flatbed truck struck 66-year-old Rafael Garcia Saturday night, killing him. 
A gas station surveillance camera captured the truck near the crash scene at 16th Street and McDowell. If you recognize this truck, you are asked to co contact Phoenix Police. Drive hammered, get nailed. The statewide holiday DUI enforcement for the long Labor Day weekend wraps up tonight. That means there are more patrols out on the roads across Arizona, helping make sure you get home safe. Coming up on 12 News at 5, Gator on the Green, the surprising story behind this monster invader. Uh, I didn't want, wouldn't want to approach that guy at all. <laughs> hey, coming up in sports, one of the best stories you'll see all day. Yeah, he may be blind, but both he running back Adonis Watt has the end zone in his sight next on 12 News at 5. Welcome back. Time now to reveal tonight's who tweeted it. Here's another look at the post for 153 years. The Arizona National Guard has been fighting for our state and our nation. Happy birthday, Arizona National Guard. We are forever grateful for all who served and continue to serve. So who tweeted it? Well, it was Governor Doug Ducey. His birthday shout out comes as a group of National Guard members prepared to deploy to Afghanistan. More than two dozen members leave tomorrow for a nine month deployment. We want to thank them and all of the members of the Arizona Army National Guard for their service. Well, check this out. Golfers in Florida coming face to face with a monster in our OMG video of the day. Yeah, this is unbelievable. Check out this giant gator seen sauntering across the green. Turns out this 12 foot behemoth has been hanging around at this golf course at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa for years now. The base says a warning golfers should steer clear of wildlife, you think? And uh, now we know why. I All can't right. even imagine <laughs> that golf course gets any business after videos like Capture that. Capture it and get it out of, get it out of there. <laughs> it seems like it would be bad for business, right? <laughs> this thing is huge. Well, Gator's not the only scary thing in Florida right now. Developing tonight, Tropical Storm Gordon is bringing heavy downpours and powerful winds to southern parts of the Sunshine State. The storm closing beaches on Labor Day while also sparking flooding concerns and thousands of people are without electricity because of the down power lines. All right, on that note, let's check in with Jimmy Q. Hey, you know what? We are watching this very closely. I spent a lot of time out in Florida. I had a little bass fishing over there recently and I, I was sitting in the boat. Big old gator just goes right by. No kidding. Yeah, I grew uh, up in Florida. It happens all the time. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah, and, bass and, fished a lot. Creve, anytime there's an open body, body of water, uh -huh. assume that there could be a gator there. That's what uh, you tell your kids. Fun. And assume that I will not be visiting that body <laughs> no. of water. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's kind of like here, only here it's with scorpions. Here. <laughs> Under every rock, just assume there's a scorpion. This Wednesday. Hey, the Friday Night Fever polls for week three need you to pick our fan vote game of the week. Choose between Mountain View at Queen Creek, Gilbert at Goldwater, Cactus at Australia Foothills, or Shadow Mountain at Paradise Valley. Voting ends Wednesday at noon. Well, I tell you what, that young man scored a, a touchdown. Wow. And, and, and you know what? I said, well, how did he know when to stop running? He uh -huh. says he listens for the whistle. When he hears the whistle, he stops. He, he got, okay. So he, he's in the end zone. I'm like, boy, that had to be a great feel. Oh, my gosh. And you said it perfectly. He is my hero. He's like, he should be everyone's hero. I <laughs> just love Adonis. Special. That is inspiration. Thanks, Coop. All right, awesome thanks, story. Coop. Well, we're not done yet. Up next, we're answering your questions in tonight's Ask Caribe. And let's take a look now at our social sound off question for the day. What's the most ridiculous thing that you could be fined for in Arizona? Is it spitting on the sidewalk, speaking too loudly, or playing too many games of pinball? <laughs> we'll have the answer for you coming up on 12 News at 6. Hey, good one. Thanks a lot. Let's get another look at one of our big stories tonight. Three people are still missing after a deadly boating crash on the Colorado River. Two boats carrying a combined 16 people crashing and sinking Saturday night north of Lake Havasu. Today, divers recovered the body of a missing woman from California. Investigators say no one on board either of those boats were wearing life jackets. Well, finally at five, time to answer one of your questions in tonight's Ask Caribe. Ken Grossman asked on Facebook, what do you feel was your best moment on air? Well, my best moments are when I'm serving our community, whether I'm emceeing a charity gala, participating in a station food drive to help hurricane victims, or asking viewers for donations on Turkey Tuesday to help Arizona's hungry. I feel like those are the moments I feel as a TV station, we highlight some of the best work that we do in our community. If you have a question, you can head to our Facebook pages and leave us a post there. All right, thanks for putting your trust in us. And remember, we're always on at 12news.com and our social media channels. We'll see you back here for 12 News at 6.